Hello everybody. Last we talked about how to go about finding out the meridian passage time for sun and moon. Today we'll uh, sun and the planets. Today we'll talk about moon. Earth-moon system, which I'll get into details a bit later. As of now, we have the sun and the moon on the observer's meridian. This is a position when you have the moon is here. It's full moon. We know that when the earth rotates and comes back to and has the sun on its meridian, we call it as a day, mean, mean day, and that's how I just change it to mean sun here, of 24 hours. Now, if you see that uh, this is the tables what are given to us in the nautical almanac for the meridian passage time here. And for moon, upper and lower, uh, today I'm just talking about upper, lower, we'll just get back to it. You can see that the sun is uh, back on the observer's meridian literally at the same time, whereas for moon, there's a daily difference. What you can see here, it's approximately 52 minutes here. Now, we talk, when we talk about it, that all these times are given in uh, GMT, these are, but they can be taken as... Uh, LMT without appreciable change what we talked in the last video but for moon now just picking up this and calling it as uh, my LMT would not be right because there's a daily difference of about two minutes so I should know what time it is going to come and some error will crop up uh, because of uh, it's coming up later every day on the meridian by 52 minutes so, moon is a earth satellite which is uh, revolving around the earth in the same direction what the earth is revolving around the sun. And we know that it is going in anti-clockwise direction from west to east. So, moon also is moving west to east along with the earth. A moon goes around like this, comes back to this position. What I call it is a full moon. It takes approximately 29 days and this is what we call lunar month or synodic month, approximately 29 days because there is a variation of about 13-14 hours. So that's why I am using the word approximately this much. And um, because of this variation now, the distance what it is covering up and the time what it takes is not constant. The reasons of this will be discussed a bit later. Now in one day, this, the Earth moves about 1 degree in our orbit. That's 360 degrees and 365 days, so about 1 degree it goes ahead. And then the Sun is back on the meridian of the observer. During this time, the Sun or the Moon would have moved approximately 12 and a half degrees. Because uh, 360 degrees, it goes at 29 and a half days, so approximately 12 and a half degrees. Now for the moon to come to the meridian of the earth, the earth would have to move extra 12, 12 and a half degrees. And now as I said, this distance and the time what it's taking is not constant. So approximately 12 and a half degrees here. So to cover up this 12 and a half degrees, the earth would have to rotate another 49 minutes. So it will come on my meridian 40 min 49 minutes later than what it came on my meridian when I started off here. At M1, at M and M dash, at M dash it will be later by about 49 minutes. Average time what we talk about is 15 minutes. And now we have the moon on our meridian. And you can see here that this particular time and, and distance, as I said, is not constant. As you can see, two different days. Here it's 52 minutes and here it is about 42 to 44 minutes here in this. So this time is also not constant. So I cannot just add and divide and just get the correct answers. So how do we go about doing it? That is what we'll be talking about it now. The average time for turning this extra 50 minutes of... Uh, uh, of uh, 
covering up this distance is approximately 50 minutes. So if the moon comes on my meridian 50 minutes later, that means it will be rising and setting also about 50 minutes later. But this is what we call daily retardation of moon. The daily retardation of moon is about 50 minutes and the reason is here in front of you. And because it is coming 50 minutes later, so the lunar day would be 24 hours 50 minutes of mean solar day. Now let us just consider that uh, moon, mean sun, they are on the Greenwich Meridian here. And let's have an observer, 90 degrees west. Now with the rotation of the earth, the observer will be under the sun after 6 hours and in the 6 hours the moon would have moved to M dash by approximately 3 degrees. So literally speaking it would be about yeah, the earth would have to rotate another 12 minutes before it comes under the sun. But as the day Time differs, so we will not straight away go and jump into this conclusion here. But this, when, when the whole earth is going around the 360 degrees, the moon would have reached here. That is from one, one Greenwich Meridian passage to another Greenwich Meridian passage, the moon would have moved here. And this is what is given to me as the daily difference tabulated in my tables. As you can see here, from Greenwich to Greenwich, this is a tabulated what it is given. Now, the ratio of M, M dash to M, M dash would be in the same ratio of my longitude is to 360 because this time what has been given to me, the daily difference what has been given to me is for 360 degrees rotation of the earth. So this ratio of m, m dash and m, m double dash would be in the ratio of observer's longitude and 360. So we can say that m, m dash divided by m, m double dash is 90 divided by 360. And this M, M dash is the correction what we have to apply for the longitude in time and that would be observer's longitude divided by 360 multiplied by the daily uh, difference. Now, the moon here in this case of west would be crossing after it has crossed the meridian of Greenwich by the amount mm dash and this is what the time what we have taken as LMT right so it will cross my meridian if I am on the observer west by an amount mm dash after what it has crossed the meridian of Greenwich so the LMT here would not be the same LMT what we have assumed for sun uh, to be taken up straight away from the almanac that would be plus this time of m m dash after the transit of lmd for transit of greenwich just an example here 29 november i'm just giving you the longitude there Approximate time of meridian passage has been given for 29, 16, 08. Now the moon would be crossing my meridian best after it has crossed the meridian of Greenwich. So I take into account the meridian passage time for the next day because it is going to cross my meridian west after so I take the next day and then I find out my daily difference which in this case is 44 minutes now 
longitude correction as I said longitude divided by 360 multiplied by daily difference which works out to be about 17 minutes and because the longitude is west I would have to add this longitude correction to the time of meridian passage local marine look LMT at Greenwich what is given in the almanac I'll have to add to it because it is west it will be crossing my meridian later and I added to the approximate uh, meridian time of 29th and I get my corrected LMT and then I can apply my LIT to find out my GMT this is how we go about finding out the time for moon so in moon the important thing to remember is that we have to apply longitude correction now if this longitude was east now east the moon would have already crossed the meridian of east before it comes to the meridian of Greenwich then I will be taking a date earlier on west I have taken the next day in longitude east I take the day earlier and that would have to be subtracted because the time would be before the marine passage at Greenwich. If the exact time was to be found out for the same question here we start off what I had told you earlier with 360 going for my longitude and trying to find out my GHA. Now this GHA we look because we assume that the date whatever the date here given to me on the ship is the same GMT so I look for the G GHA here 140 and my 140 this closest GHA is here at 0 1 hours I'm not going into the details of how you go about finding out because you will have to follow all the steps of trying to show that the date is changed here I purposely put this thing here with the change of date so just to explain it to you here I look for the time when it the moon will be at Greenwich if when it is at the Greenwich the GHA will be 0 and this is between 1600 to 1700 hours now west the moon will be coming up later so the time should be after this it was okay this time would be okay if my longitude was east and yes it is going to cross my meridian before it crosses the meridian of Greenwich so this time was okay but here the longitude given to me is 140 so I should be looking for the time after it has passed the moon has crossed the meridian of Greenwich so I should go into the next day here and I would calculate my take the LHA which is lower than this which is about one, one hour here and this is the increment the difference between these two and this increment as we know that has got D correction in, included into this which is 14.6 so we have to get down to find out the time for this and uh, look into the nearest increment table for uh, 1048 he was already added into this correction so I'll have to subtract and then I get my exact time the way we did for sun and planet now to sum up how do we go about doing this we take the time of the meridian passage for the given date whatever is given to me then depending upon is it east uh, longitude east or west if it is east I take the previous day time here if I was asked if the date was given to me as 30th here longitude east I would take the previous day time here or if the longitude is west I would take the following day the preceding day of, of it is west Then I calculate my longitude correction with this formula of daily difference into T long divided by 360 this would have to be added to the meridian passage of longitude west because as you can see here it is, incre it is uh, increasing 1652 to 1733 it is increasing so you will add to the meridian passage time of the date concern and if it is east it would have been earlier you would be subtracting it 
and this would give you your LMT meridian passage. You will apply LIT and get your DMT. Calculate your declination and rest of the problems. Now, meridian passage for planets, what I discussed last time, here is given for a duration of three days. I am showing you here 9, 10, and 11. If you look into the page of this, the meridian passage is given below the data of stars and this is for the middle day that is for the 10th and similarly here this is for the 13th it is neither for 12th nor for 14th it is for 13th and this is for 10th we saw that uh, for sun and uh, moon it is given daily whereas for planets it is not given daily so strictly speaking a longitude correction should be applied to time of meridian passage of the planets but the daily difference rarely increases more than four four minutes so for all practical purpose that is why it is just overlooked this is what i am trying to show you here if it is for 10 you can see here 1044 and 1035 and the daily difference because it's for three days daily difference is three three minutes so it is not it's never more than very rarely more than four minutes so we overlook it but just for your academic uh, interest what we will have to do is we'll write down the time of meridian passage in question if it is longitude east as i said uh, you're writing it down for preceding day and longitude west you'll be writing it down for the following day east is earlier this would be later and uh, here like i have asked for nine so I have got this longitude, so I go in for the date, which is later date, then 9th, and find out the daily difference. And this correction would have to be added or subtracted depending upon the value of what you have taken as a second day. Now this is my second day here, what I have written it down, we can see that the time is reducing. So in this particular case, it would have to be subtracted to get the exact time for uh, uh, not ex actually exact time but with the long longitude correction nobody follows it but just for your academic interest i have uh, just told you about this thank you uh, i'll continue with the time for meridian passage next